Derived from the Japanese Imperial Court headwear known as the Kanmuri, the Camry rightfully earned its name as Toyota's crown, representing one of the best-selling Toyota vehicles ever, even eclipsing the once record holder Ford Taurus. The Camry held reign as the best-selling car in North America. Still going strong today, the Camry continues to be a bestseller. Undergoing a complete redesign in 2001 for the 2002 model year, the Camry makes an appearance wearing Lexus-style guise and sporting an attractive entry price with, at the time, nice amounts of standard features. Available in anything but base level LE, Sporty SE, and the loaded XLE, the Camry is offered with a 4-cylinder and V6 engine, along with the choice of 5-speed manual transmission or 4-speed automatic. The former are only available on the 4-cylinders, excluding the XLE. Cars are built at either the Tatsumi plant in the city of Toyota within the Aichi Pre Prefecture in Japan, or, like ours, in Georgetown, Kentucky. Our Camry was produced in January of 2003. Hey everyone, in today's in-depth review, we are taking a look at this very nice and very well-maintained 2003 Toyota Camry. And this Toyota Camry is an XLE trim, and it does feature the XLE Premium Plus package. It is painted in aspen green pearl coat, and it does feature the taupe leather interior. Its full pricing is shown on screen, and the full options list is in the description box below. Today's review is going to be an in-depth review. We're going to cover everything from the exterior to the interior. We're also going to cover mechanical bits, fuel economy, and everything in between. It's always nice to find a really nice surviving car from this era, and finding this Toyota Camry is no exception to that rule. As you can see, it's actually in really, really nice shape, and you'll see the interior as well. The Camry is front-wheel drive with power coming from the standard 2.4-liter 2AZ FE dual-overhead cam 16-valve inline 4-cylinder engine. This engine is a volumina block and head construction utilizing Toyota's variable valve timing with intelligence and their electronic direct injection system. This engine features a 9.6 to 1 compression ratio and creates 157 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 162 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. The Camry comes equipped with a 18.5 U.S. gallon fuel capacity and consumes 4.2 gallons per 100 miles driven with an estimated total driving range of 444 miles. EPA fuel economy figures are 21 miles per gallon in the city, 29 miles per gallon on the highway, and a combined average of 24 miles per gallon. Honestly, I thought it would be slightly higher. While a 5-speed manual transmission is standard with the 4-cylinder cars, when you opt for the XLE, you get the electronically controlled 4-speed U241E automatic as part of the package. Alright, so around the rear of the Camry, as you can see, this is very understated in its appearance. Not a whole lot in the forms of decoration back here or anything like that. Not really a styling tour de force either. But one thing is for certain, it is a very classic design. Doesn't really date very well, or it's not very dated either. Still shows to be a little bit modern. Back here we do have transparent red clear lens uh, lamps. Red tail lights, stop lights, and all that brake lights. Amber indicators, and of course your reverse lamps. Do have some chrome back here in the form of the Toyota logo as well as the license plate plinth here and the Camry XLE badging. It's hard to believe even from some of these exterior shots you haven't seen the inside yet but this car has well over 200,000 miles on it. Now that's nothing for a Toyota but the fact of the matter is this car still looks almost brand new. Now, as we come across the profile, as you'll see, 
The car is actually a really nice long car. It's a full-size car. It's based on the Lexus ES300. So they share the same platform. The Toyota Camry was just a little bit less priced, but still offered a very nice amount of features for the money. And of course, you also get Toyota's legendary quality as well. Steering is hydraulically assisted, vehicle speed sensitive, variable rate rack and pinion with 3.3 turns lock to lock and a 34.8 foot turning radius. Wheels are the 16 by 6.5 inch aluminums, shot in 215-60 R16, Arizona Silver Edition All Season Tires. Brakes are hydraulic 4 channel power assisted 4 wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors up front and solid rotors in the rear. They are assisted by 3 sensor ABS and electronic brake force distribution. V6 powered cars can be opted with the electronic vehicle skid control with track traction control and active brake assist. Alrighty, up front the Camry looks a lot like the Lexus ES that it's based on. The two share a similar platform and thus have similar styling. The Lexus may be a little bit more upscale, but this XLE Camry is a very nice car. Moving down into the clear lens complex reflector halogen headlamps. You got your brights in the middle here or on the inside main beams there or low beams and then of course your indicators down below we have fog lamps and we got the black grill with the chrome accents here in the middle just an overall very nice looking car all right now before we get inside let's take a look at the key real quick now of course we don't have smart key access but we do have toyota's dual blade key and we've also got the remote transmitter just a remote keyless entry you've got your lock unlock trunk release and on the back you have a panic button and the car is already unlocked we'll go ahead and show the interior now as you can see aside from the driver's seat the interior is actually held up very well over time this car does not look like it has 212,000 miles on it all right, taking a look at the door panels here. Two-tone taupe leather and vinyl. Soft touch materials. You've got this little gathered vinyl here. Soft touch armrest. Lots of bird's eye maple harvested from the plastic forest. Power mirror controls and the mirrors are also heated. Power locks, window lockout. Power windows with auto one touch up and down for the driver's side. And down here, of course, you have your map pockets. Stereo speakers in the doors. And you also have your chrome door poles. Nice large air vent on the driver's side. You have this little small sliding parcel tray here. It's just a small little tray. Instrument panel brightness and dim switch. Parking brake here in the footwell. And of course, just brake and accelerator because it does not have a manual transmission. Now mounted in the floor, we have our trunk release here and our fuel drawer release here. And of course, we have eight-way power driver and passenger seats side impact airbags, and adjustable lumbar support. And taking a look at the seats, as you can see, very nice and supportive. They're also very comfortable seats, upholstered in this really nice leather and vinyl. I'm not gonna lie and say the entire seat's upholstered in leather because it's not. But down here is a high wear area, and that's the only part of the interior that's showing a large amount of wear. Alrighty, pan through the interior and show more details. As you can see here, nice, fluid, easy to use power assisted steering on a leather wrap four spoke steering wheel that tilts. It does not telescope. And over here, some controls. We have our clock and info control, our mode and reset. And that all displays up here in the upper portion of the instrument panel. And of course, on the right hand side, we have a typical Toyota cruise control. So, portion four to you is cancel. You can also resume, accelerate, set and coast, and then pressing this button turns it off and on. As far as our multifunction levers are concerned, turn indicators here. We also have our high beams and flash to pass, headlamp controls, and of course our fog lamp controls. Over on the right hand side is our wiper washer controls. Staring straight ahead of us on a black panel is our instrument cluster. We have an 8,000 RPM tack with a coolant temperature gauge, 140 mile per hour speedometer with a fuel gauge, 
And of course, down here in the odometer area, 212,000 miles. It's actually got 212,061 miles. And of course, you got your Prindle display in the center. All right, now moving across the top of the dash, as you can see, the materials are still in excellent shape. They're not warped, they're not split or faded. A little bit of warping is going on around the passenger side airbag area, but that's kind of typical. As stated before, we do have our clock, and of course, we've also got our trip computer as well. You can also do your mode, go through all the different stuff. You can also reset and go back to your clock. All right, moving down the center stack, in between the two air vents, we have an aftermarket Kenwood audio system. It is equipped with Bluetooth. It also has Sirius XM satellite radio, USB input, as well as auxiliary input. Moving down, we retain Toyota's factory single zone automatic climate control, where you can select your panel distribution here. You also have your foot and defroster, main defroster, rear defroster, fresh air recirculate, AC. You can turn the whole system off or turn it on auto. Adjust your temperature here and your fan speed here. Security indicator light and of course our four-way flashers. Moving the shift lever out of the way, we're gonna move down. We have heated seats up front, a 12 volt power point, nice large storage tray here, plenty more wood harvested from the plastic forest, small little trinket tray here. Underneath this panel lies our cup holders. And of course, we also have this really nice padded armrest. It opens up to reveal some storage, but what's really nice is it actually has two levels of storage. The second level is much deeper and it also contains another 12 volt power point. So overall, I would say that the interior of the 2003 Toyota Camry is still a very nice car. Even though it's 20 years old, that doesn't matter. It's a Toyota, so it probably lasts forever anyway. Overhead, we have an automatic dimming rear view mirror. We have a compass, and you can turn on and off the auto dimming feature here. Overhead, we do have sunglasses storage. We've also got overhead reading light controls, power sunroof controls, and home link universal garage door openers. And we have nice large sun visors here, and it does feature illuminated vanity mirrors with progressive lighting here. You can dim it or brighten it. And of course, the sun visors do swing out, but they do not slide out or nor have extensions. And of course, we also have overhead assist handles, high adjustable seat belts. Just overall, just a very nice car. All right, let's take a look at the rear seat now. One nice thing is we have nice wide opening doors. Features very easy ingress and egress to the rear seats. Quick look at the door panels back here. Reveal that they look about the same as they do up front. Maintaining that styling theme. High quality materials, gathered vinyl, padded armrest, more plastic wood, power window controls. You also got some storage in your armrest, chrome door poles, storage pockets, not to be outdone. We've also got storage pockets in the backs of both seats. We've also got rear air controls back here, a rear air vent so you can turn them on and off. Now overhead, we do have overhead lighting, overhead assist hooks, high adjustable seat belt or high adjustable head restraints on the outboard seats, three point seat belts for all passengers. These are a 60 40 split folding seat back here and they're actually pretty nice and comfortable. Another nice feature, we do have this fold down center armrest with cup holders. Now in a Lexus, it might be power operated, but this Toyota Camry does feature a roll up window shade, clips into the headliner here, and it does provide some protection from UV rays and bright harsh sunlight for the rear passengers. That's a nice welcome touch. In addition, this Toyota Camry also features the rear cur uh, curtain airbags for the rear seat passengers as well. Alrighty, another feature I forgot to mention was the seats are 60-40 split folding and they're easily accessed by pulling these uh, levers up. They're on the inboard sides. This is the 40 position or the 40 portion of the seat, as you can see.
and this side, the right hand side is the 60 40 or 60 portion of the 60 40 split. It's really nice that it can actually be accessed from the inside of the car. And of course they lock back into place. All right, there are several ways to open the trunk. First and foremost, you can just reach down here, driver's side uh, footwell here, lift up on this lever and that will release the trunk there. You can of course go old school and just stick the key in the keyhole here in the license plate area, turn to the left and it'll pop the trunk or we can just press and hold the trunk release button on the key fob. It will not raise up automatically on hinges, but it will unlatch it. As you can see, nice wide opening trunk lid. The trunk area is fully lined and fully carpeted. It does have a nice large floor mat as well. They do have this nice little organizer tray back here. Kind of looks like cup holders too, but I bet you could put big bottles in there. You can see the opening for the 60-40 split opening seats. As you can also see, the hinges actually retract into this area here to avoid crushing any kind of luggage or oversized items and safety release here. And of course, closing the trunk is just as easy as closing it. Alrighty, and that is our in-depth walk around review of this 2003 Toyota Camry XLE. We hope you found the review informative and if you did, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Check out Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews and our Instagram channel at Brinsoj1. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.